All right guys, welcome back to another video. So we are continuing where we left off when we we're replacing the transmission output shaft seal. So now we're gonna go ahead and also knock out the differential. So while I've been to this differential before, I went ahead and put in a Eaton True Track, or rather replaced an existing Eaton True Track after I used the wrong fluid and messed it up. Um, however, I never took out the pinion seal or checked the preload on the pinion bearing. Um, at the time, I really didn't think I needed it. And to be honest, nothing's really changed since then. However, I've been having a gear whine and that's been there since I bought the car pretty much. Um, I know the previous owner and he had actually a couple sets of gears put in to get rid of the gear whine. Um, each time they put in a new set, they'd redo everything, go away for a bit, drag race the car, and come back. So allegedly the reason that is because the crush washer, which I'll show you in a second, um, isn't great for drag racing. So these are our parts over here. I went ahead and picked up. Spark plugs are not free now, that's later. Um, so this is the kit pretty much. It is, let me open this up real quick to show you. All right, so this is the kit and this is a factory washer right here, crush washer. Essentially, this is what it's replacing. Um, so the way the Ford has you do the differential, basically you're setting the preload and everything. This washer goes on the pinion. We'll show you the existing one when it comes off the car and then you crush it. You can see there's lines in here and it takes like 140 foot pounds of glue to start crushing this according to the manual. And uh, you crush it down to a certain point check your preload with torque wrench and there you go uh, if you over torque this you got to go ahead and get another one out and try again because it's going to be off so kind of a mind only sensitive thing and the theory goes if you're launching a 4,000 pound car uh, you can over crush this washer by basically putting that much torque through it so i know the gear one is kind of a common issue we're going to see if we can fix it with this kit and you pretty much have your I'm not sure if there's a front or back piece. When we get it apart, we'll go ahead and see what fits where best. Probably this is going to sit against the pinion. And then all of our little spacers, which are very thin, go in here. And then this front one goes on the top, and we set our distance that way. So pretty simple little design. Makes sense. The easiest way to go ahead and figure out the exact uh, what you need is to use the existing crush washer or a new one, in which case I have a new one just in case we need it. Um, like three bucks, doesn't matter. Uh, you can either crush it down, get the proper preload, and then take it back out, take a caliper and measure it, match the shims to get close. You can do it without this by just guessing and basically torquing it down, checking preload if it's too tight, putting more shims in or too loose, taking some out. Uh, and what I'm going to try and do is use the existing one. I'm going to take the differential apart. We're going to measure preload and then see if it's actually loose or not. And uh, I'm guessing it probably is that or the washer's messed up. We're also going to go ahead and throw some um, gear paint on there because I want to see if uh, the tooth pattern is correct or not. And that'll tell us if we have to reshim our actual pinion gear, which is what these are for, uh, up or down into the differential. That's another reason for wine. So I have the gear wine issue on any kind of acceleration, just cruising. It's just there. If I let off throttle, not there. It's usually that's the drive side of the gear as opposed to the coast side. I also went ahead and got some new uh, differential pinion bearings. I don't know if I'm going to need these or not, but I picked them up. I'd rather have them than not have them. And um, yeah, it's really about it. So as you can see here, I'm actually doing these videos out of order. This is the pinion shaft seal for the, uh, not pinion shaft seal, the uh, output shaft seal, but I have to order a special tool for that. So in the meantime, we're going to work on this. Quick recap. Again, watch the last video to see how to take all this stuff out. But we're going to take out our X-pipe and um, tubes right here. This is from Cook's. So if you have a factory, a different style, it might be a little different for you. Um, but took mine out here. And the drive shaft has to come out to be able to get to the pinion gear and everything. So we got four, uh, four of these guys right here. I can't remember the size in the video. And then uh, six in the rear. And we got our car up on jack stands and everything. Front on a couple blocks so I can get to the front if I need to. I lift the jack stands at the moment. So that's why I'm doing it this way. And let's go ahead and get under there and get working. Last but least, before we get going, I'm going to have this linked in the description below. Uh, Ford Racing Performance Parts, they have this little manual online. If you Google 8.8 pinion ring and pinion install for Ford, you'll find this sheet. But again, it'll be linked below. And this is the instructions I'm going to be following just to kind of get a good idea of what we're doing. So I guess to go ahead and start off with taking off the wheels and tires on the rear end. So we're going to do that first. And uh, then we'll pretty much hop into this sheet. wheels are off i'm gonna leave the brakes on for now because next thing i want to go ahead and do before we do anything else is honestly i want to try and crack that pinion nut loose 
I know it's going to be really difficult and they have a special tool you can use to fold the flange. I'll go into that show I'm talking about in a minute, but uh, I figure if we already have the brakes on here, the way the Eden True Track set up, it doesn't actually rotate. It won't let it move if both wheels locked up basically. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, see if we can get this off. All right, so that's our guy right there. Turns out it's a 27. So, yeah, let me go ahead and see if I can crack that guy loose real quick. And then we'll kind of continue onwards. I know this has been out before, so it might not be quite as tight as this factory. We'll find out. They can be a real turd. All right, so that wasn't too bad. Went ahead and loosened just a hair just to make sure the bolt was going to be able to start working this way out. They are a bent bolt, so it's going to be tight all the way out, but at least now I can know it's, you know, not like 400 foot pounds tight type of deal. Um, yeah, so let's go ahead and uh, get the brakes off next and it'll start freeing up our axles and then we can also take off the diff cover and all that stuff. So I'm gonna go ahead and pop the brakes off next. So if you're curious, take the brake caliper off. All I gotta do is remove the two bracket bolts, which are these guys right here, 17 millimeter, and you can pop those out. Then I'm just gonna rest this right here. We're not taking the axle out today. Axles are coming out, but not the actual axle itself. So, easy day. All right, usually I'm not this dumb, but I was not paying attention when I was jacking this up. Not really sure what I was thinking, but we gotta move our jack stands because pushing the axle up into the car obviously makes accessing everything very difficult. So I'm gonna readjust them, but the, uh, with the jack stands where I usually put them, which is underneath the control arm mounts over there and over here. Do it off camera real quick and we'll get that readjusted just as like, yeah, was not thinking, but obviously can't get to the bolts this way. So as you can see, it's a lot easier to access everything now. Next thing I'm gonna go ahead and do, we gotta pop off the sway bar. Um, there's a plastic cover right here. If I can get it to slide off properly. Um, covers up one of the bolts though. That guy right there in particular, so. I'm gonna get that off. Um, that's not our, sorry, a panard bar, not our sway bar, this guy. Uh, and then I'm also going to go ahead and probably take off the sway bar, at least these two links, there's one here and one here. And that'll kind of let this drop down out of the way and give us full access to the differential area. So I'm gonna go get started on that, a couple of bolts, and uh, yeah, let's go do that next. All right, covers off. Pretty much got your bolts. They're a 13 millimeter. And uh, yeah, I have running the Shea diff brace. I don't know if I mentioned that previous, but that's obviously why I have all this extra crap here. Um, yeah, so next up on the true track, and we've got to pop out this little uh, lock ring right here, and then we can get our uh, little block that holds the axles in place. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. We're gonna slide the axles out. I don't know if we can take them all the way out, but we need them at least out of the differential. From my understanding on how you check preload is, uh, well, yeah, once start at the differential, you rotate it over and that's where you check it with your torque wrench. Um, something like that anyway. So I'm not entirely sure preload necessarily is my issue, but I definitely think the gear tooth pattern is probably going to be off. Um, looking at it on here, I mean, you can't really tell, but that's why we got the uh, 
the marking compound. So I'm gonna go ahead and clean all this all this extra gear oil off. We get some marking compound. Just kind of see where it sits right now because I'm curious. Um, but yeah, let me grab these. We gotta get this thing out, slide our axles out, and then uh, I'm gonna clean this up off camera. I'll meet back up. I'm ready to do our gear compound check. Finally got this thing apart. The uh, be a lot easier if I had a pair of pliers that weren't a piece of crap. These things I keep forgetting to buy new ones, and when I need them, I forget about it. So, all right, here's the thing. So, I'm not entirely convinced the crush wash is the issue. When I put this diff together back or together last, I did keep these on the appropriate sides. Got to double check the manual. But someone mentioned these arrows need to be facing outwards, which I have them both facing inboard could cause a little vibration there. So I'm gonna swap those around regardless, um, according to the manual, of course. Anyway, what I have here is some gear marking compound, and I didn't have this last time, and I probably should have, not because swapping out the diff itself necessarily meant a change in gear tooth pattern, but because the, uh, I have a strong suspicion that the tooth pattern isn't great on this thing. Um, so if it's having issues on the drive side, meaning when the car is driving forward, it's very possible that um, basically it got shimmed the wrong direction. Uh, I don't know exactly how that happens. It's the pinion. Maybe the bearings weren't seated all the way or the races weren't seated all the way when they went ahead and uh, did that. But I'm going to go ahead and mark these first before I take it apart. And just see where it sits because it doesn't necessarily mean that the crush washer is the issue. It could just be an opinion depth issue. So I've never done this before, so bear with me. Rotate it around. Yeah, I mean that the noise you hear is just the backlash. Nothing like loose loose. Let's see how our gear tooth pattern looks. Well, that means absolutely nothing to me. I don't even see a pattern on this side of the gears. Oh wait, never mind. There it is. Very slight. Let me see if I can put some resistance behind this. We'll spin it over one more time. Okay, so that's better. So this is where we want it. I don't remember what side of the gear tooth this is on. Let's see how the other side looks. The other side's not so great. So see how it's all the way on that far edge right here? I'm gonna bet that's our drive side and that's kind of where our real issue is coming from. So I can't physically move the pinion at all by pushing or pulling on it. So we'll see what that's about. But uh, yeah, so. This year pattern again is pretty much very much on the edge there. This side is more or less in the middle. So that's interesting. Let me go ahead and uh, look at the manual, see if we can figure out exactly what that means. All right, so I wanna pull the picture of everything. So this is a ring gear, as you can see, obviously on my car, it's like this right now. And this is what we got going on. So the coast side is the side that's lined up perfectly and which makes sense, I don't get any noise uh, when I let off the throttle, reverse, whatever, just coasting, it's doing its thing, good to go. Heel is the outer side of the rain gear, and toe is the inner side, and we have it, basically our pattern on the drive side is on the heel. So, cool little uh, guy right here. So, let's see, coast side, drive shaft, so yeah, we want the we want them both to be centered. So that's just, this is where it gets a little interesting. So if the heel is the outside, I 
This is the driver's side, too far out towards the heel. Backlash correct, thicker pinion shim required. So that looks like we actually need a legit pinion shim. That's where our issues are coming into play. Let me read this a little bit more and see if I can interpret this a little bit better. All right, went ahead and popped out the diff as you can see down there and uh, picked up this little dial type inch pound wrench. So basically it's kind of a pain in the butt to do. It's also a pain in the butt to read, but you used, you want it, use bearings you want it. Uh, I want to say that they were saying in the eight foot pound range. So just kind of go back and forth, decent pace. And this one seems to be Again, my thumb is probably not helping anything. I'm trying to hold it on here. There's a little bit of resistance, but we might want a hair more, um, just kind of depending. I did loosen this not a hair, but it seems to be within pretty close. It doesn't cross the 10 marks, so it's not too much. But uh, yeah, so we're looking at this right here. And yeah, so it doesn't cross the 10, but you know, it's, it's probably pretty close to where it should be. So I don't really think the crush washer is big of an issue as I originally thought. My guess right now is probably that tooth pattern, so we're gonna kinda see what we can do about this. I'm gonna even plot it out and uh, start messing around with the shims, I guess, and see what's up. And then to get it off, I'm just using my same bar that I used on the uh, transmission side, two bolts, and I'm using the breaker bar to basically hold it in place so this flange doesn't spin while I pull off this nut. And it seems to be working just fine. So, it's not on there tight enough to damage anything. And we should be good to go. Um, yes, yeah, so next up, I'm gonna get our three jaw puller, pull off this flange, push out the pinion gear. And looking in there, you can kind of see how it grabs the splines and everything. But again, it hasn't moved, and like there doesn't seem to be any play in this whatsoever. So the bearings are still good and everything. We're just gonna kind of keep messing around and see what we can do. All right, so that honestly came out with like super minimal effort. That was really nice and easy. So let's go ahead and pop out our pinion gear. Oh yeah. Nice bunch of gear oil over my hand. All right, let me set that down real quick and wash this crap off. All right, so a couple of things. Um, now that I can see this side of the pattern, it looks like it's not quite as bad as I thought it was um, in terms of it hitting both sides of that gear. It looks like the pattern is just really high up on the gear, like up in this area, and we want it down in here. So my understanding, looking at this, go ahead, the music I'm listening to, epic Western music. Pretty cool stuff to listen to in my opinion. But here we are. So issue we have the uh, driver's side heel, which is the outer gear, is all the way on the outside. So backlash, correct, which measured it again just to make sure it is on the looser side of things, but Ford says uh, somewhere in here it needs to be 0 0.012 inches to 0, 0 uh, there we go, 0 0.008 inches to 0 0.012 inches. So we're on the 0 0.012 inches, so it's a hair loose, but it's not too bad. It's well within, it's close enough basically, it's not going to cause a problem. Uh, however, the issue we do have, backlash correct, thicker pinion position shim required. So what I'm going to go ahead and do, picked up a nice little handy dandy gear separator right here. This guy, and the way this is going to work, I'll show you in a minute, but it's two part. We use this in conjunction with our press. So we're going to slide this part underneath the gears or underneath this, uh, this bearing anyway, so you got space in there and we're going to slide it off. I mean, we're take the shim out and measure the shim and then get a slightly thicker one or add to it with our shim kit here. Reassemble it while I'm at it. I'm also gonna caliper size uh, how thick we need this to be and see if this will work or not. I hope it does. I'd be really disappointed if it doesn't, but I will also see if this works in here as opposed to the crush washer. But thankfully the crush washer just needs a set backlash. So if it was set correctly and it hasn't been any further crushed, which who knows, um, might be well within reason to reuse it should we need to but yeah there's a new one compared to the old so it gives me an idea we're going to use the caliper to also check uh the size and check out our um this uh spacer kit so let's go ahead and let's get at it
All right, so I screwed up just a little bit. This is why we got a new bearing, but uh, haha. The, uh, you really wanna make sure this thing is tightened all the way down. So I didn't quite tighten it enough and just caught this outer ring. And uh, I think I may have just bent it a wee bit. Um, not the end of the world, but just something to be aware of. I'm gonna do this all the way. But yeah, so again, like I said, not the end of the world. I plan on replacing the bearings. Anyway, that's why I got new ones. But yeah, so this guy popped off now, and actually it looks like I may have got lucky. It's still good. I'm going to replace this bearing anyway, but uh doesn't look like it's any worse for wear. But yeah, still, I was pulling on it pretty hard, so we'll replace these guys. Just make sure to bend this housing at all. Um, so yeah, there's our bearing off. This here is our shim. We've got a single shim. You gotta get the calibers out and see how thick that is. And this is our new shim pack. Basically, we want one just a hair thicker. So let me go ahead and measure out what we got and we'll see how this works out. All right, just measured them out, it's kind of hard to see, but these are all, I had to rewrite this because I messed it up a little bit. These are all 0 0.50 millimeters. Cross that out. Cross that out. This is 0.72 millimeters, and this is 0.94 millimeters. So we can combine shims as needed, but if we combine any two of these right now, it's gonna be bigger than what we need. So going up one shim size, we're gonna go to 0.94 millimeters, and, uh, See if that does it to get our pattern any better. All right, so went ahead and measured everything. So our stock shim was 0.74 millimeters, 0.74 millimeters, and the new one's 0.94 millimeters. We'll see how that works out. And then our stock crush washer was crushed down to 11.01 millimeters. The closest I get the eliminator kit was 11.08 millimeters. So considering that the it felt a little bit light on the um, resistance that was on there, that should be just fine. So let's go ahead and put it back together. I'm gonna do that off camera and I'll meet back up with you when we get our next ring pattern and see how it looks. All right, so this was a little unfruitful. Uh, gear is still in the car. I need to pull it out one more time. And honestly, I'm gonna go back to the original shim. Um, it looks like from my understanding that the gear was indeed set up correctly. So let me show you the first picture. So this is the before. Um, you can see the pinion side or the, the coast side is the side that doesn't get really much work because it just sits there and kind of coasts pretty much perfectly centered on the gear where it's supposed to be. This is with the original shims and everything. The drive side, I was having a hard time understanding where it was at. It looks like the outer edges are contacting, but nothing on the inside. So that's weird. And I was like, all right, you know what? I'm gonna pay attention to the outer one. Maybe I need to use a bigger shim. So I used a bigger shim from 0.72 to 0.94, popped that in, and it did adjust the pattern on the coast side. It moved the coast pattern uh, in toward the inner side of the ring a little bit. So there was some movement. It was supposed to, in turn, bring the drive side in from the outside a little bit. And it really didn't change much. Um, pattern does not really look noticeably different. Maybe a little less on the inner, but still kind of gross looking. Um, so I was like, okay, maybe we're going the wrong direction. Went ahead and used a smaller shim than the factory. Went down to the 0 .50 size shim. Popped that in there. And mind you, backlash is not perfect in this setup until we go back to the original ones. I'll have to adjust that. Um, but again, it moved the coast side now out instead from the center. And the drive side honestly looks the same as the first picture. So, yeah. So upon further inspection, I'm going to pull out the gears in a minute. I think I'm honestly going to chalk this up to the gears are indeed worn. Um, it's, you know, cars from drag race pretty hard. Has had a couple sets in there from previous owners. Um... I don't know, but the results have always been, it hasn't driven right, kind of, you know, after a couple of drag passes, it starts to come back. And I guess that's what's doing it, to be honest. Maybe it's not a proper braking procedure that they're not doing, I don't know. Um, but yeah, so that's definitely not ideal. Uh, I think what's happening is the drive side gear is getting worn out on the outer edges, and uh, rather the center is getting worn out, the outer edges are now making all the contact, hence the whine. Um, so that's my best understanding of what's going on. The solid crush washer, like checking everything over with this guy, 
I don't think this thing got any more crushed than it already was. I don't think that theory quite stands up. Like, I get why they say that, but looking at it, it doesn't seem to make a difference. Um, putting the other one in there, making it the same size, to checking the um, pinning resistance, just, it doesn't quite make sense to me as to why that would be the problem. So, not really gonna make that a big issue. So, I guess the next thing is whether I wanna just throw it back together or order a new spring and pinion. So, I'm gonna look into that a little bit this evening. See what I want to do, and um, be honest, I might just throw it back together and live with it for a bit longer. I don't know. We'll see. All right, guys. So our new gear set showed up. These are new 373s, fresh from Ford Performance. And uh, so, in the interest of keeping this video at an appropriate time, and it's not just me, it's basically me taking that diff in and out, changing out shims, trying it a bunch of times over and over and over again until I get a proper pattern. We get everything lined up properly, uh, clearance-wise. So, instead of me just filming this a million times over and over again, I'm going to go ahead and do this off camera. I'm going to explain what I do after I get it together, because to be honest, I kind of know what I'm doing. I've watched a couple videos on it. I have the Ford manual and their gear install selection and all that. Uh, where it differentiates, though, in that install thing, uh, they suggest basically using the stock sized everything with Ford Racing or Ford Performance in stock gears. Um, easy day, so I'm going to start out there by putting the gears in. Well, not necessarily. In theory, I should be able to put the gears and with the same bearings and everything we have right now. Tighten everything down and the, the pinion, this guy at least. Oh, she's a little heavy, hold on. So, and this guy at least should be properly good to go. As long as I match my anti-shim kit, as long as I match the anti-shim kit, the rest of it's in the car with the crushed crush washer. Um, so we're gonna, I'm gonna do that, get that thing tucked away nice and good like. Uh, and after that, I got to go ahead and uh, adjust the actual carrier bearings to get it shimmed properly. So my goal, I want it 0 .008 inches of um, backlash on the dot. I don't want anything greater. 0 .007 or 0 .008 is what I'm after. My theory as to why this gear end winds and why they keep repeating the wind is if you just redo the stock stuff, which is what this guy did, um, or whatever his shop went to, uh, this one is set on the looser side of tolerances. It's at that 0 0.012 inches, a little bit bigger. I think when I pulled it out first measured, it was like 0 0.015. So that's bigger than the spec is supposed to be. So yeah, it's not gonna wind for a while, but once you start hammering the crap out of the car, the gear's not meshing properly is probably what causes the issue. Um, on top of that, I also need to, we're also gonna adjust pinning angle at the end of this. We're gonna get the rear wheels back compressed and everything and figure out what the pinning angle should be. We have an adjustable upper control arm. And I think that's also playing into an effect with our one piece drive shaft. So yeah, pretty much everything that I need to do and we're gonna go ahead and knock it out. And once I'm done, I'll show you the pattern I get and um, we'll see how everything works out. Do our measurements and stuff. I think we should be good. All right, so I lied. We're not done yet, but I wanted to give you some progress and show you what's going on real quick. So new gear is in, installed. If you saw my last gear install video, you get the idea, I've torqued everything down and uh, will you just backlash? There's a little chart inside of the thing. So I adjusted mine 0 0.006 inches with the shims because I want that much change of backlash. Um, you basically take one shim from this side and move that same amount over on the other side and you shift it one way or the other to get your backlash adjustment. So easy day. Uh, measured the old ones that came out at 0 0.260 and 0 0.281 uh, drivers, passengers. So I adjusted it 0.289, add a little bit to the drivers, took away a little passengers. And I actually got my... Uh, backlash right in the money. So let me show you real quick. All right, so you can see that dial gauge right there. Zero it out, just about, that's uh, a real pain about, pretty close to zeroed out. And uh, 0 0.06, or actually a little off. I had a 0 0.08 earlier, I don't know if something moved. I'm checking on a different position of the gear. But yeah, pretty close to 0 0.08. Um, however, when I hadn't viewed my Marking oil, sorry, it's kind of a gear marking compound. So this is the coast side, and you can kind of see where she's marked. Drive side though, not so much. You can tell she's totally on the front half of the gear right there. So, yep, we want that pattern in the middle. So obviously, we're not done yet. I gotta pull this thing back apart, adjust the pinion shim, put it back together, and figure out where I need to adjust backlash, take the diff back out, just the shims to get the backlash. 
and put it all back together again. So you can see why this is just a bit of a time consuming process. So that's what I'm working on and I'll come back to you once we have this thing uh, fully in there properly. Alrighty, so welcome back once again. So we just took out our shims. We're doing the final adjustment on our uh, stuff. On our backlash sword I'm thinking of. So right here, what we got, see if we can see that properly. So the current backlash is 10. 0 0.010, I want 0 0.018, and uh, this is our shim count. So we have the no lip, lip for the two big shims, driver side, passenger side. So what we gotta do is 0 0.002 inches added to this side and taken away from this side. So I was also reading up a little bit. So these factory shims are great for factory gears. They're a great starting point to figure out where you should be. But I did notice that they were kind of easy to get in and out um, with the differential all the way in there. And after reading into it a little more, you want to make it so it's pretty stiff. Uh, you should need a tool or a slight block of wood to just very lightly slide the shims in. So just rubber mallet and just very lightly tap the shims into place. So what I wound up doing is actually adding 0 0.005 inches to both driver and passenger. And I think that'll also assist in keeping my differential good to go. Um, you want to make sure there's some preload on the bearings. And I think before it was honestly too loose. Uh, again, with the gear change, that stuff can kind of affect things. So... It may look like a mess, but I went ahead and measured out driver side, passenger side. This is the current setting that gives us 0 0.010 inches or 10 hundredths of an inch of backlash. We want point or eight thousandths of a backlash. So these are all our shims up here. These are the 0.5 shims. This one is a 0 0.007, which is the one we're going to change. 0 0.009, 0 0.30. Um, so all we're going to do really is... Take away this 0 0.007, or sorry, take away this 0 0.005, put it here, and add in 0 0.007, so 567, that's two. That'll give us those two thousands for backlash. There is a chart on the manual down in the description that shows all that, and that's what I'm using to figure it out. So now we have two of these guys, and we need to take away that same 0 0.002 on here. So. We have 1007 and 1005. Our little micrometer here, or um, caliper, whatever you want to call it. I call it caliper. Uh, we want to get rid of the 0 0.007 one, put that here, and pick up a 0 0.005 and put that here to create an equal amount of space. So now, put it back together, we should have the correct backlash. All right, well, finally got a winning combo, and uh, I think we're good to go. Current. Backlash is now just in between 8.5 or 8. Point, sorry, 008 and 009, which is pretty much perfect. I realize you guys can't see. There you go, if you really care. But yeah, a lot of shims, and I've been adjusting it. So let's go ahead and hop onto the car, and I'll show you exactly what backlash is. Then we'll get a ring gear, uh, a gear pattern, and see what that looks like. All right, so looking at the dial gauge. So you guys can see that all right, but zero is about where she peaks out at. So, yep, just about there. Maybe a hair more than eight, but honestly that's fine. It's cold, it'll heat up and just expand a little bit. So that is perfect. So let's go ahead and paint our, uh, do our paint on the gear and see how that looks next. All right, so I'm not an expert at this by any means, but we have just a hair darker on the inside, which is good. I was looking at a crap ton of reference pictures, and for slightly competition use, that's pretty much where it's the best going to be. Uh, you can see a deeper inland of right around where the gear starts there and runs around the bottom. So you have some pretty good tooth contact pattern um, all the way around. And then on the coast side, looking pretty good as well. So... Backlash is within spec. Gear tooth pattern looks great. You want to make sure there's no contact of the paint on top getting removed because that'll mean uh, pinion set way too deep. But I think that's pretty solid. That looks, looks pretty sweet. So let me go ahead and finally get the rest of this thing back together. We got to put on a new, uh, I'm not going to do this on camera, but I got to put on a new uh, pinion bolt. I was using the old one just to adjust everything. Put our new one, torque it down, get the rear one back together, and that'll be that. Hopefully, no more gear wine.
then of course proper braking procedures. All right, so went ahead and got the rear end more or less back together. I'll show you guys in a minute what's going on with that. So next thing we gotta go and check is the pinion angle. So the car has an adjustable upper control arm. Uh, the whole point of that is to set pinion angle. So let me go ahead and show you what that is real quick. All right, so real rudimentary picture here, but get the idea. Uh, stop fact, the, the stock drive shaft is a one piece, or is a uh, two piece, don't need to worry about pinion angle. You can see right here, you're always gonna be perfectly in line. There would be your center point. So as soon as you get a, a solid aluminum one piece shaft, which is what we have in here now, uh, the pinion angle becomes a problem. So basically you want the, either perfectly in line as this one is, or you want the output shaft of the transmission and the input shaft or the pinion side perfectly straight. You wanna parallel with each other as you can see right here in this picture. Pretty easy and shut up. I'm not using a screen recorder. You're gonna deal with it. Um, yeah, so pretty much I got, went ahead and downloaded a angle finder on my phone and we're gonna just put it up to the output shaft and the transmission. Nice flat parallel surface and we're gonna put it up to our brand new pinion and the pinion uh, flange and see if they're even. If they're not, well, we gotta adjust them. All right, so right there at the top, I see my drive shaft right there, nothing too wild. And uh, I went ahead and got the car back on jack stands, I loosened up my pinion, I'll just show you in a minute. And uh, we got it in a position to where all the weight's on the rear suspension so it's fully compressed and how it would normally drive. So underneath the car, I just watched the video on, from DMR on how to set this pinion angle properly because I was all over the place not doing it right. But essentially, grab ourselves an angle finder like this. Just random one downloaded off the app store, so I'm gonna run it this way. Oop. And you can basically lock it, however, so that's kind of cool. So we're going to find our transmission angle looking at the output shaft, and then we're going to run negative or two degrees less than whatever that is. So looking at it for transmission happens to be like, I don't know, I think it was uh, 1.5. We're now going to go two degrees less and try and aim for uh, 1.3. Like that. That's essentially what we're going to look for. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, get underneath here and adjust this pinion angle and see what we can come up with, and I'll show you guys at the end. All right, so we got it pretty much where I need it. So transmission is the top one, and the rear diff is the bottom one. Looked up a bunch of videos from VMR and everything else, trying to figure out what the heck my positions actually needed to be, and they want negative 2 degrees with poly bushings from the transmission. So... Basically, wherever your transmission degrees at, subtract two, and that's where it should be at. So that's what it did. Uh, that's gonna account for basically axle wrap. What's gonna happen is when the car takes off and puts on a hard acceleration, this is gonna raise up just a hair, and it should raise up roughly two degrees. The other thing I was looking at, because I wasn't sure, is I was trying to figure out where my upper control arm bolt is supposed to be. I was also trying to figure out for the longest time what this ding was doing here, and I just realized it's so that you can take this bolt out, which is kind of funny, to be honest. I didn't. I don't know, just so someone else has actually been in here and practical about the car. So, anyway, uh, I've been trying to figure out what the deal is with these positions on, you know, upper bolt or bottom bolt, and what it comes down to is anti-squat, which is very cool because I didn't know I had any adjustability here, but most aggressive setting, which is actually explains why my axle is hopping up and down so violently without having the shocks fully tightened. Um, fully aggressive is where it's at right now, so the most anti-squat you can have means the uh, car is really trying to fight any kind of squat. Um, it almost goes to the point of where it starts putting in positive separation at the track. So uh, higher horsepower, more initial what you want, basically, is what it comes down to. So we're in the bottom hole here, and the reason I was curious, because I wasn't sure if I needed to be in the upper one or not, and the lower control arms are down at the bottom hole as well. So the next adjustment you could do to get a little bit less anti-squat would be move this to the upper hole, leave this alone, and then if you want even less, you go to the middle hole and basically stock or a little bit less than stock is the very top hole and top hole on there. So kind of interesting. I had no idea about any of that, but um, yeah, so I'm gonna go ahead and put the car back to the way it was, meaning I'm gonna drop the axle back down to normal height so I can get a wrench in there and tighten up these two nuts, uh, throw some Loctite on them so they don't loosen up on me. And I think we should be good in terms of the rear axle pinion angle and uh, the rear axle in general. We just got the fluid in here uh, tomorrow. All right, so just the next day I finished up yesterday, we went ahead and got the pinion angle set, tightened up the, um, what you call it, the upper control arm. So that's good to go now. And uh, yeah, so that's pretty much dials in everything on the rear end I needed to worry about. 
Uh, we still got to put diff fluid into the actual diff. And next thing I want to go ahead and knock out is that rear transmission seal. Mm -hmm.